Can you hear me? And online customers. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. Please have Okay, we shall start. Uh, good, uh, good evening in Japan and uh, good morning, good afternoon, or well, maybe midnight in some countries. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, Hi, everyone. Good afternoon here. I'm Lia Putra from Ache. Nice to meet you. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your confirmation. But please stand up here. Thank you. Thank you. And my name is Tatosi. I'm the Director of the University of Education. And moderator of today's uh, special lecture by Professor Baba. And before starting, let me confirm a couple of things. Uh, first, uh, this lecture, the Zoom screen is recording. Second, <laughs> yeah, please go to speaker. Okay. And please turn off your camera and microphone during this lecture. And start. Uh, about Q and A session uh, for the people who join in person. Uh, in person, uh, raise your hand. Okay. And uh, if you are busy, uh, you can speak up. And the, the participant who join in online, uh, please write uh, any question or comment. Please write it down in the chat box. Even who join the YouTube live, who can write a comment on the YouTube live. And if you are, uh, uh, and uh, if you want to ask Professor Baba directly, uh, please press the button of raising the hands. Okay. And once you do a pick point out, uh, please turn on your microphone and talk. Okay, uh, now we shall start uh, opening opening remarks. Uh, Professor Oto Sensei, the Vice President of Naruto University of Education. Thank you, Sapa Sensei. Good morning, good afternoon, and good, good evening, everyone around the world. My name is Hiroaki Sawa. Vice President of Naruto University of Education, responsible for international exchange. This is the third time in English, but it is the first time to conduct in English. Today, we invite Professor Takuya Baba from Hiroshima University. Surprisingly, in total, 232 people registered from 41 countries all over the world. This is really amazing. 32 countries join the Football World Cup in Japan. The number of other countries in this special lecture is more than the world. COVID-19 makes significant changes in our society and work time. We will be at home for this, right? And we spread rapidly. And it became normal that people from all about all over the country came to us. On the other hand, I still believe that the importance of meeting with people by face to face. With international international education, we are very glad to invite Professor Baba in person and host many variable uh, conferences with the people all around the world by Thank you very much for coming in Naruto of the University of Education. We will draw your vision. We are very looking forward to your special lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Now, let me briefly explain his biography. Uh, Professor Takuya Baba, uh, after graduating university, he joined Japan Overseas Corporation for Asia. And also, he worked as a high school teacher, high school mathematics teacher. And during the 1990s, he worked uh, as data expert. And from 2000, he entered academia. He has been a professor since 2010. And and the Dean of Graduate School for International Development and Cooperation. 
And he, con he still continues to work as a practitioner of international cooperation in Bangladesh and Zambia and some other countries. And his area of centralization in mathematics education and international cooperation in, develop, uh, in educational development. And he received various awards and uh, many books, I think, in Hungary. And he has been involved in the OECD project, such as uh, ISA and the Paris. Okay, uh, before moving on to his special lecture, let me uh, share some memories with you. Actually, he is my PhD supervisor, and uh, during my study, uh, he took me various places for the history, uh, like Zambia, Zambia, Bangladesh, Australia, etc. And telling the truth, uh, I was very nervous before going to the territory. <laughs> This is not because he is a professor, but I'm afraid of his uh, strong energy and stamina in the field. Uh, he never gets tired even with his two, three, four school days. His passion and uh, his uh, curiosity to know anything from the field never ends. And at the end of the day, I'm exhausted, but he still in the dinner. And one story is that uh, one day I asked him to create a mobile application about related to our research, Zambia research. And he said that's a good idea. And, uh, and he contacted to the professor of other faculties, such as uh, faculty of engineering or linguistic divisions, to have a meeting with them. And then we learned a lot of various things from them. And what I admire is he doesn't make any boundaries with other areas of specialty, even in academic discussion. So uh, what I learned for six years in the PhD, it's not only academic issues. And what I learned from him is how to, say, how to be professional. So what is professional? as a researcher or as a practitioner or even as a person. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Baba Sensei, for coming to Naruto University of Education. Uh, we are waiting today and uh, we, uh, we are very looking forward to your presentation. Let's get out of the chat. Thank you very much. Such a wonderful introduction uh, really made me smile. <laughs> I really deserve one. Of, I'm not very sure. Um, usually, I'm telling to my students, uh, I'm usually very strict to the student. Not just, I'm not aiming at my students complete two years, three years courses, but I want them to even work very hard after the graduation. Because your main target is not just simply getting award. Award you know, certificate is just a single paper. And that's something, yes. But after working those two years, three years, you should be able to gain the kind of skills or knowledge so that you can, those knowledge and uh, you know, skills can carry you even after the graduation. So I will say, uh, at the end of the uh, course, they usually say, thank you very much, Professor. But I usually say, hold on that work and let us wait for 10 years. After 10 years, we will see whether you work here in our university uh, really make you grow even after the graduation. So anyway, that is my, Passion in a sense. Um, so let me start. Uh, Ozawa Sensei, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to uh, talk on such a wonderful occasion. Uh, I'm very glad to talk here. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much uh, for those people who are participating online. 
I really are uh, glad to talk to you. Um, today's talk, actually, what um, I started when I get this invitation, I started talking, uh, thinking about what should I talk. Um, I'm now 61 years old. So uh, it's probably good for me to talk about the, the professional career because I spent almost 40 years. So what happened during those 40 years? And maybe depending upon your stage of life, maybe you are beginning of your career or middle of the career, or you are reaching at some age and you know, getting a very important position. But depending upon the position, you can, I hope you will be able to use some of the information which uh, you get today. In fact, I started my career in 1984, working as a JOCB, JICA volunteer in the Philippines. So about 40 years back. What I can say now, there was no job, mathematics education and international cooperation combined. There is no people working, you know, using mathematics education, international cooperation. So in a sense, I have been developing a career. I, nobody is showing me that direction. So I had to think a lot, what should I do? And that was very important opportunity experience. And that's what I would like to talk today. I said 61 years old. In Japan, 60 years has got a certain meaning. We call it kanbeki. Kanbeki is turning around the you know, whole calendar. So I have completed first cycle of life. So I'm now one year old in second life. So it's good for me to reflect first cycle of life. And um, as I said, my career involves around the mathematics education and international cooperation. Sometimes I discuss about the mathematics education in Japan as well, but many of the work which I'm doing is uh, with some other country internationally. Um, so while listening to my talk, please think about your career in the past, or maybe in the future. I am now interested in uh, some of mathematics that figures or the image of mathematics in, uh, in future. So probably I can uh, give some kind of uh, key or inspiration to us. Reference, this is not really an academic presentation, so I'm not going to refer page something, uh, this kind of quotation, but um, some of the idea which I'm uh, going to refer is these two important documents. The first document is Mathematics for All. You can Google and download this one. But uh, this was published in 1984 by UNESCO. In fact, this is a product of international conference, which is called ICME, I-C-M-E, yeah? ICME, and uh, international you know, mathematics education researchers gather together. They talk about what is mathematics for all. And I'm proud as a member of mathematics education research community, this was done in 1984, while education for all, 1990, six years later. So we had some kind of vision towards this. And this is very important uh, message. And coincidentally, uh, we, some other you know, uh, work I will mention later, which is called ethnomathematics. The word ethnomathematics also being presented for the first time in this same year of 1984. So I think mathematics education community really seriously engaged in this area. That is the first reference which I would like to uh, have in my mind. The second one, sorry, this is in Japanese uh, document. 
uh, from future which will come. Anyway, if we wait, future will come. But future which we want to create, this is something different which will come. Yeah. So what about what kind of vision do you have? What kind of you know future do you would you like to have? To answer, what kind of effort are you making? That is the uh, second point future which we want to create. And that is the last part which I'd like to mention. Although I don't mention a uh, page, but uh, those two documents are, I have in mind. I distributed two documents. One is a table yeah. throughout my career. So, Vertically, it indicates 1980s, 1990s, 2000, something like that. And that corresponds with my age of 20, 30, 40, something like that. And at that time, what am I, was I doing? So career and some kind of event which I had. And this three column which I mentioned is related to intended, implemented, attained curriculum. I pick up some of the important work which I did in the past. And I also uh, shared another document, a list of my publication, uh, including Japanese. I'm sorry, um, not all are uh, in English, but uh, some of the documents are related to those documents. And what I'm going to present is, following this blue line. And at my 20s, what did I think in curriculum? In 30s, what did I think? 40s, what that did I think? How are they related in my topic of 20s, 30s, 40s till today? At the same time, it also interacts with my practice or other areas implemented and attained. Uh, levels. So I can't really talk everything because if I started talking everything, uh, I'm sure you will get confused and I'm getting confused. So I would like to give me focus on the intended curriculum, but at the back of it, not that I'm not concerned about attended curriculum or implemented curriculum, I am in, you know, interested in, but uh, for the purpose of today's talk, let me focus on intended curriculum. So let me start in 20s. Ah, sorry. Very young uh, person, yeah? 40 years ago, I was a very young, look like a student, but um, um, anyway, uh, this, is, this was my first career. I was a, a high school teacher in the Philippines. And uh, the uh, left side is uh, I'm having some kind of uh, supper together with my friend anyway. So during this period, I spent uh, two and a half years as a high school teacher in the Philippines. And that high school is a special science high school. So very talented in science and mathematics were chosen to that school. In fact, uh, student receive some kind of uh, uh, scholarship. So they don't have to pay, but rather they are paid. So they must be a good student. During that period, uh, this is not related to mathematics, but this is related to what I think basically. Eggplant, nasu, nasu. Eggplant. Uh, another volunteer who worked to, together at the same time in some other areas and um, growing eggplant. And that eggplant seed is Japanese. He brought that seed from Japan. But to grow that eggplant, it requires a lot of water, a lot of fertilizer. But if you water fertilizer, giving them, it can grow very nicely, they are very shiny, looking very nice and big eggplants. 
while at the side, we have got the Philippine eggplant, which is a bit skinny and color is not looking very nice. But for Japanese eggplant, it requires a lot of you know, work to add that. So which is better for local people? That is a question which he raised actually. We discussed. Anyway, it's not that simple, but it really made me to think what kind of things is good for the society. Anyway, this is not Japan. Yeah? So, because it's a Philippine, Philippine variety is good, maybe so. Or no, no, bring good quality of things and try to teach them how to grow the you know, Japanese variety. It may be good. It's not that simple because it requires a lot of water. That water may not be available. So there are many conditions should be satisfied in order to attain this plant, growing expert. So that is really the very first uh, event which I had in the Philippines. After two years and a half years uh, service, I came back to Japan. I again became high school teacher in Japan. I became two uh, high school uh, teacher at two very different schools. One is the top schools within the area. Another one is the bottom schools within the area. So I cannot imagine those two schools is really the same category of senior high schools. Because one of the that top schools, more than 90%, 95% proceed to the university and among them the top universities. While bottom schools, half of them drop out because senior high schools is not compulsory education, though more than 90% proceed to senior high. Because they, they say, I don't like uh, you know, studying. So I didn't want to come to a senior high school, but my parents asked me to go. Because it's embarrassing if you don't go to schools. That's what they say. And you know, after starting their studies, but they cannot catch up with the study in senior high and they drop out finally. Or well, even among the students who proceed, who was who are able to finish, but they don't proceed to senior uh, tertiary education or university. So why I talk about these two type of uh, schools is the second event, mathematics as an exit. Because mathematics education, which we have, basically develop a kind of mathematics, which is a preparation to our university. Different, you know, differential uh, equation, not differential equation, but integration, differentiation, those kind of things is basically preparation for university. Something which you are going to learn. Is it really necessary to terminate your education at the end of senior high? And that was very important message for me. What kind of mathematics should we teach to high school students who are going to finish their education. So volunteer senior high school teachers develop mathematics as an exit because that, that is the end. That is not the entrance to university. But what kind of mathematics do we have to teach? I really got impressed because they try to provide alternative. You know, there is certain, you know, uh, our course of study, intended curriculum, uh, say we are supposed to teach this and this and this. And according to that, uh, curriculum is being developed. 
but the whole curriculum basically prepared for the further education. Especially that today. Now we are trying to develop a bit a different type of mathematics textbook, but that time it was really prepared for universities. So that was the things which I heard. So important message which I got from NASA or eggplant, what kind of cooperation, what kind of you know, activity towards the different countries is good or um, in short, what is a development, a development cooperation? That is a big question mark, which I have. The second example, or second uh, event is mathematics as an exit. What kind of mathematics should we teach to our students? And that was, even today, I still think about that. And that is a very important question to carry me professionally. Always think about that. And that is a huge question. And it's not easy for me to get that answer. But don't be afraid. We have a long time. If we continue thinking those throughout professional career, Sorry, I spent a lot of time on that, but uh, that is a very important foundation. So in my thinking, after I finish work in the Philippines and also in Osaka Senior High School, I wanted to come back to international field once again. So when my senior uh, uh, people, senior friend asked me, whether you are interested in uh, uh, international cooperation again, I said, yes, I would like to go. I went to Kenya as a JICA expert, 91 to 95. And after that, I joined university, not as a professor, as a graduate student. So I was a graduate student at 35 years old. And during my studency, once again, I joined the JICA. And must say, uh, some of you may have heard this gigantic project. This is really a huge uh, project. So in my studies, a little bit older than the other. Why my students are wearing army-like suits? Because that is national youth service. That is the uh, organization which was built to cater for the children of freedom fighter. In the uh, Kenya got to independent 1963. And during that period, many free freedom fighter fight, you know, fought against the UK and uh, they died. And this national youth service try to cater for the children. Although those children, uh, those students are no longer those you know, uh, children of freedom fighter, but uh, um, they still have some kind of practices, uh, disciplinary uh, kind of practice. At the same time, because this is engineering institute, mechanics or uh, automobile kind of science. So, uh, for that uh, school, I try to uh, improve the quality of education. After working in Kenya, in fact, um, I try very hard, but many of the uh, you know counterparts, we call counterpart, are Kenyan teachers who work with uh, not drop out but to quit the job. So anyway, I was not really able to leave a lot of you know, knowledge, skills, or I've grown some of the peoples at that time. So when I came back to Japan, I wanted to recharge myself. What is really necessary for the uh, developing countries or international cooperation? So I started, um, 
uh, my master's uh, master course and doctor course 1996 till 2000. This little one, it's not me, my child, <laughs> my children. And you see how they look like today. Yeah. So you can really feel time elapsed. So um, when I started, I took ethno-mathematics. Maybe you have heard this word. Ethno is related to something like culture or ethnic group. So attaching, you know, prefixing as a, a ethno in front of mathematics. So cultural mathematics or uh, some ethnical mathematics, that is a meaning of it, which was proposed in 1984 together with uh, Mathematics for All. So um, I questioned to him when he was alive. Yeah, he passed away a few years back, but uh, when I questioned him, can you think of mathematics for all without ethnomathematics? That was his answer, actually. So for him, ethnomathematics is a major component of uh, when we are considering the mathematics for, for all. So uh, uh, actually, I did uh, finish my doctoral thesis on this theme of ethnomathematics, how we can use ethnomathematics as a part of uh, mathematics education. Ethnomathematics, anyway, can be found within the society or within the daily life uh, where you are doing. Uh, some kind of uh, mathematical practices called ethnomathematics. There is some kind of, you know, knitting the clothes or uh, some kind of, you know, culture, uh, some kind of um, uh, cultural product is, if it has got certain kind of system or patterns, it's called ethnomathematics. But um, if I compare school mathematics Certainly, ethnomathematics has got a very different kind of nature. So, how I can combine those two different kind of ideas, and that was my main thing. Maybe some of you may be interested in that. Uh, please read the paper, one of the paper which I wrote, because I have to move on to the next topic. What is important is. Why I started thinking about this, it's related to egg plan and mathematics and the eggs. I wanted to see alternative mathematics instead of mathematics for entrance to the tertiary levels. What kind of mathematics education should we have? Those people who don't proceed to higher education or even finishing at primary education. And during that period, I was also interested in uh, language issues. And just one example, Nusu is in Kiswahili, Ha. Yeah? So uh, when I was staying in Kenya, this right, you know, uh, right sign, this is called Ugari. And I like this one very much, but this is too much. So I said, I want to have half, yeah? Because I don't want to leave the remaining. I don't waste the food. So I said, I want half. Then the servants, she cut only a little portion of it. No, 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 I said half. With gesture, I protested many times. No, that's not a, here. This is a. So maybe I thought I should speak uh, Kiswa in uh, their language. So I said, Ninataka Nusu. I wanted ha. Okay, let me use a uh, quota. Ninataka Lobo. 
<laughs> very little sight. So, you know, couldn't be with her because the person who served usually is a lady. So I couldn't be with her. No, 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 no. What I want is this man. I struggled three days. At the end, she explained. In Kenya, you know, in Kenya, we have a culture, we have to, you know, we are supposed to entertain guests. You are the guest, or, you know, coming all the way from Japan to Kenya to help people. Why can I, you know, make very little portion? That's what she said. Ah, you know, I understand what you are saying, but they have another thinking. My mother, when I was growing, my mother used to tell me, don't leave food. So my culture and her culture is conflicting. Simple experience of her, you know, creates a lot of things. So simply teaching some kind of mathematics may create some kind of something. Otherwise, if we don't pay attention to such kind of small things in the culture, we may miss some of the important point. Children, if children can say what they think, like an adult, it's okay. But just imagine one, you know, one grade, one grade, two little kids, and they, well, they may feel some things, but they may be not be able to explain why they feel a bit, you know, some different things or something difficult in learning mathematical concepts. So that is very important even. And that is why I learned uh, ethnomathematics. I studied in this country. During that period, I, I was a, you know, a, a doctor student by then. I was asked to be a JICA expert, SMASE project, gigantic project. Uh, we started nine districts in Kenya, although it's not nationwide yet, later it became nationwide and it spread across the continent. Yeah. So when I started project, um, uh, I was a founder member, not I started, but I was a founder member and uh, I had those, you know, eggplant or all those um, uh, things. And also uh, endogenous development. Have you heard that? Endogenous development is a, a sociological word, uh, growing or development from within. Because some of the uh, ideas, uh, modernization theory tells us uh, some important technology or important resources coming from outside. And you utilize those so that you can develop uh, your, your countries. But I feel that is too much exogenous or external resource driven. I feel it is important for last to internal needs, internal technology driven kind of development. So that's why. When I went to uh, SMAS, uh, SMAS second, yeah? instead of left side, these models is LAZA expert gives the national expert uh, national uh, trainers and they give to uh, these trainers and schools. That kind of thing is, you know, the lower people doesn't have a knowledge and skills. So we simply keep, so it's just giving the you know, skills knowledge and they give to the next the next week, next week. Certainly this one doesn't function because uh, usually in the process of giving or transmission of knowledge and skills, it's diluted. The message is not properly uh, transmitted. So what I thought is a creation for knowledge resonance. This is my term, actually. Uh, I invented it during this period. Uh, while I was looking at the past document, oh, this is nice work, even now, I think. Yeah. 
But what is important is how we can create this kind of resume. If you are a teacher and create, you know, tell your student, do, do. Simply saying that, can the student willingly work, willingly create some things? So it is very important how we can create the kind of atmosphere where they work together and try to create their knowledge. So I usually say, half joke, half serious. Clapping the hand. Giving encouragement. Oh, teacher, you are doing a good job. Honestly speaking, they may not be doing very good things. Little good things. You can clap them. You can motivate them. And 90% I praise, only 10%, remaining 10%. If you can do a little bit of this one, maybe you can be better. So you are doing very good things, but that good things can be improved. That was the strategy which I did. Having all those which I had to do. In my 40s, I finished my doctor course, I got a PhD, and after that I became an assistant professor, associate professor, and during this period, fortunately, I got two very important work. One is Zambia Special Education Program. This is education program. We send our students to Zambia. The other one is a JICA project in Bangladesh. This is a JICA project. And I was one of the very first ones who got to the uh, JICA project. So many people started asking me, what is a know-how of uh, learning or getting to JICA project? Um, and both of them, fortunately, it continues still today. So let me briefly explain about the JICA Bangladesh project. Um, we have, we hold some kind of study session and uh, working with uh, Bangladesh experts and uh, holding some seminar so that we can share those narratives. How we can utilize their you know, contribution, that's very important. So uh, setting up many activities and we try to let them come up some of the ideas. During this period, period there are two difficulties which I have. One is corporatization of national university. Maybe this word is very confusing, even me confused. National university means public university, public funded, but it is becoming corporatized. So uh, Ministry of Education said to the national government, you have to make your own money. We cannot support everything. So maybe 20%, 30%, you make more money. And that for that purpose, we go to a uh, JICA project so that we can get some kind of money. But not only that, more serious case is a project to program approach. This one requires a bit of uh, explanation. Uh, not only JICA, but internationally, we usually hold a system project. Maybe you use in your own sense, but when we talking about the project, project is setting up time bound, three years, five years, some years, and very targeted certain areas. We are going to establish curriculum center. If we are going to establish curriculum center, maybe we build up a building, or maybe building up there, we try to train the curriculum expert. So within five years, you set the goal and you expand all the efforts towards that. One good thing for that is very intensive effort. So however difficult the goal is, you can certainly uh, you know, fulfill your objective. That is a good way of saying. 
but also that is there is a witness of that. In order to attain that, we sacrifice the other elements. So when we finish the project, okay, now it's time for you. After we finish that, now it's time for you. So they are changing you know, from time to time. So when we are focusing on certain area, that area is very good, but what about the other area? The moment you finish that area, you shift to the other one, what happens to that area which you have to bear? That was a problem of project approach. So we, there is a criticism against that and they change to program approach. Program approach is a whole sector-wise or ministry-wise pro, you know, program. It's a plan, annual plan. So in Ministry of Education, we have both the primary education, pre-primary, secondary, tertiary, vocational feedback, or the, there are you know, different kinds of activities or uh, education. So looking at the whole picture of it, and also giving you money, how you are going to allocate those money to whole sector. That is a approach which was being conducted while we are doing that. So we were criticized a lot because within the program approach, we are doing project, JICA project, focusing on math and science. So they said, what are you doing? We are, you know, the music, we are shifting program approach to project, ah, sorry, project approach to program approach. You are, you know, re reversing our uh, effort. But five years later, we realize program approach has got certain weaknesses. Although whole sector, you know, plan was good and the uh, uh, money was there, but many of the quality uh, related activity was not proceeding well because many of the skills knowledge are required in certain areas, even in mathematics or even in textbook development. And those, you know, expertise are not well developed yet. So that's why, although program approach was promoted, toward the end of the program approach, they had to review and they said, oh, there is no progress in uh, quality areas. And looking around, oh, we had this project. So suddenly we are spotlighted. You see? So, you know, suddenly you change project to program. Not everything is solved, but the program was uh, actually was important to that time. So, yeah, I spent too much time on that. Uh, Zambia Special Education Program was uh, started in 2002 and will continue. What is good is uh, for this is we send Japanese students. Uh, to Zambian uh, schools. They do teach the local uh, students. At the same time, they do uh, master uh, uh, study. So it is really because they have to master language, English, and also this is a part time for them to uh, teach, but it was really makes them grow. So it is very good for them, although it's tough, but it is also good for us because we develop a connection with the Ministry of Education. We receive many of the staff from the Ministry of Education, from the university. We grow uh, those people. And also we were dispatched as a JICA expert. So one time I became a facilitator of curriculum launch. So in Zambian curriculum, it carries thanks to the Hiroshima University, something like that. During this period, uh, I was involved in comparative study of math and science P 
between United States and Japan. So far, I have talked about uh, Kenya, Philippines, Bangladesh, uh, most of the developing countries, but also there must be some things also here in Japan. So I wanted to pay attention to Japan as well. At the same time, I was given the opportunity to visit the United States because education is embedded in certain society. So unless you understand the relation between society, uh, uh, education and society, it's very difficult for us to understand why education look like that or how education contributes to the development of the society. It was a really nice experience. In, in, the, in uh, United States, can you believe they don't have a national curriculum? Many of you, I suppose, you know, you have got that national curriculum, but the United States doesn't have a national curriculum. They, you know, according to their constitution, Education belongs to state government. And even state government has a good standard, but individual school may have a different kind of school activities. So it's very really interesting. When I visit the schools, some classrooms, some students are lying down and doing mathematics, which I have never seen in Japan, but that's individualization to certain extent in the uh, countries. But it was a really nice experience. By looking at the other country, you now realize your country, how does your country look like? And that is very important. You may think you know your country. You may think you, you know your country's uh, context. But unless you meet some different cases, you are realizing what we have this is not always true to the other countries. 2010, in my 50s, I became a professor and at the same time dean, a vice dean, dean. And during that period, I was trying to learn how to manage the uh, uh, schools. During this period, at the same time, I wanted to further see what is a root in the societal difference. So I participated in various study, which uh, my friend, uh, Wee Chong Sha, from Australia, Melbourne University, Originally, he is from uh, uh, Singapore. And uh, together with him, actually, pinkish uh, shark is a Wichon shark. And together with him, I participated in Hong Kong uh, uh, kind of um, workshop. Uh, in Hong Kong, again, surprising, uh, University of Hong Kong is very, very you know, prestigious university. If, if you look at the uh, you know, world, well uh, their university is located very high. But in Hong Kong, half of teacher in high schools is not permanent contract based. So you always face your contract may be terminated. It's very serious. I don't have a exact figure, but I'm sure ninety percent more than that. A you know, permanent uh, teacher in Japan. If so, we can think about professional growth. But if you do not know next year you have a contract money, how you can sit and think seriously? You may think, you know, how can I please my boss? How can I appeal to my boss so that I can continue my uh, uh, contract? So uh, this values project started because uh, East Asian country performed very good in team study or PISA study. So they wanted to know why 
And there must be some good reason. Why do we put, not simply uh, you know, how to teach, but the societal values may be different from other countries. So they try to inquire, inquire the values on that. At the same time, during this period, JICA started the course called Japanese Experience of Development. This was a very, very interesting experience for me, for itself. Um, uh, 2018 uh, was 150th anniversary of Meiji Restoration. So how we modernize our society, that should be shared with JICA students. That's why JICA requested us to develop some kind of course, Japanese experience of developing. When we shared that, some of the students said, no, no, our country has got this kind of history. Our country has got this uh, kind of, you know, unique uh, kind of asset. That is exactly what I meant. Not that you learn our history, but through learning our history, you can reflect what happened to your country. Why your country are like this of today. And that is very important. So history is some kind of food for your reflection. Why you are here? What kind of people? your society take. At the same time, I'm, as I said, I'm thinking across the different things. So to show the data, you know, uh, 150 years experience, but I start very old, you know, history of Japan. At the same time, Japanese culture, right bottom is a UNESCO intangible world heritage, this is a Japanese history, uh, cultural things, which is recognized as by UNESCO, but how we can make very hard, difficult kind of work of life planting, because you have to spend the whole day doing like that. It's certainly difficult, but how we can make that one fun? And that is a very famous culture in uh, Hiroshima. During that period, like, uh, like today, uh, international workshop, we try to invite some of the internationally renowned professors from other countries, from United States, from Australia, uh, just recently, uh, Mozambique, on time for. Uh, my student is like this, uh, Japanese and uh, uh, variety of countries. So when we invited those international guests, they usually get impressed how you know various diversified my my students are. So that was one of the important important environment for the student to learn. Uh, after working in Kenya uh, in Bangladesh, sorry, uh, more than ten years, I had a curriculum workshop. That side is a national curriculum text book board, which develop curriculum and national textbook. So we try to share uh, some of the ideas and try to get their ideas, trying to grow some of the ideas. For those one is possible, how you can construct some kind of constructive uh, kind of uh, relation with them. This one, another important relation with Zambia, and interestingly, you can see that sign, uh, Zambian teacher, teacher educator, actually, but teacher, try to teach our Kuzoku student, a touch school student. And we try to develop a, a lesson together. It's sort of lesson study, but we try to do it uh, in uh, uh, attached schools. Right side is a permanent secretary visiting the, our president and uh, uh, adjacent to, next to uh, permanent secretary is uh, our graduate. 
So now I'm preparing you for my retirement. I'm in my 60s. So turn around my you know, uh, calendar. Uh, sorry. First cycle of my life is um, I really enjoyed and I accumulated some of the knowledge and uh, uh, experiences. So what I'm trying to do is try to integrate all those and, and at the same time, how can I convey to the other generation? Or how can I help my student to grow further? Uh, this is one of the things, very important things, which I'm uh, uh, doing. And Dr. Kusaka is also a member of this. This can be possible only after conducting children's studies and teaching material studies, or curriculum studies, or lesson studies. What we are doing now is we try to develop some kind of assessment which is tuning towards the weakness of the children in Zambia. Because if we have a certain kind of step like that, maybe Zambia student has got a difficulty to climb certain place. We try to identify that area. And if that is difficult, why not making a small step in that? Now that step is very, very you know, um, simple sort of, but we try to identify some of the important things. So what we do is we do interview, task-based interview. We give some kind of task and try to uh, induce some of their ideas. So left side and right side, two small, you know, two pictures. You can see how neatly students arrange the bottle tops. This is a cap of a pet bottle. Yeah? They are supposed to arrange four rows of five bottle tops. So left side is nicely done. Right side is, you know, it looks like, but uh, it's not really correct. After doing this one, we develop some kind of intervention tools where you should focus and after making an intervention. You can see some kind of, you know, uh, graph. We are able to see some uh, effective uh, improvement uh, using that. But what I really value is, is local professional knowledge, not the bringing the knowledge from Japan or from the United States, from Europe. But we come to Zambia, try to work with Zambia experts, with Zambian children. Where exactly the weakness is? Certainly, we have got some idea, but we have to interview in local language. And the Zambian you know, experts try to change the expression. Because if we change some word expression, children's responses are different. So it's very important. Child friendly language. Now uh, I'm almost finishing, but uh, now uh, Bangladesh, Zambia, uh, I have uh, had that kind of experiences. At the same time, uh, comparative study with the United States. Those are, you know, when we are talking about that, we tend to pay attention like 21st century skills. Have you heard that? 21st century skills or global competence. Yeah. That strong word, I feel that is like a drug. Sounds nice, but what is it? And is it really necessary to your country or to your place? So I, usually can't argue. What about local competence? If global competence is necessary, what about local competence? And here I combine the word local and global, global, local. Actually, this is, there is a word, you can Google that. Uh, just recently, together with my uh, student, 
we invited international guests, especially from Asian countries. They really value local knowledge, local competence. At the same time, international interaction as well. So I think global, not only local, uh, not only global, but also local perspective is necessary. In fact, uh, there is also UNESCO participant. They also appreciate that, and they actually initiate such kind of things as well. So integration of local global perspective is very necessary, I suppose. And what can we think of? Uh, here to global uh, global perspective. I think uh, it is important for us to think about the problem which we encounter in the local society. You may think that's natural things. We are facing a lot of local things. Yeah, in a sense, it is very true. But how we can use those local issues to utilize mathematics? To utilize our school knowledge, how you can use sort of integration, local issues, global knowledge, global uh, local knowledge. So for that purpose, I am paying attention to mathematical modeling, which is also employed for uh, PISA, uh, OECD PISA, and also statistics, because many of the uh, information is intensified in some of the statistics which we have in uh, local uh, uh, places. So future, um, sometime later, I, I'm going to retire, but uh, my dream after retirement is try to support the younger generation in networking and consultation in mathematics education and international cooperation. Because I am happy, I said I developed my career from scratch and I enjoyed many uh, topics. So I wanted to share uh, some of the knowledge which I got or some of the thinking which I have. Uh, in fact, what I'm thinking is the very first question. What is development? I still pursue. What is development? Or how can we help other countries' development? Like eggplant instance shows. Is it better to have a Japanese variety? Sometimes, in some cases, yes. Or maybe we can combine two varieties so that it is strong to the dry uh, weather but also it can be a nice word. Maybe we can think that. Let me help you to think a little bit further. I usually tell my students that don't just think your problem, which you are facing now, but think ahead. Because your children, which you are facing, suppose they live 2000, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, even after retirement. So it is important for us to have a good score to guide them to certain direction. This is called the population pyramid, right? Sorry, uh, Egypt and Zambia is, um, because I had to talk to Egyptian and Zambian students. So that's why I chose that. No other intention. Uh, Egyptian case, I, I think 2019, that is the most recent one as this uh, uh, data is concerned, is a bit you know, distorted in shape of pyramid. But the Zambia case is very nice uh, sort of pyramid. What will happen in uh, 2049? Very small younger generation and very wide older generation as well, almost parallel. 
What does that mean? It see that as good because life we expand, you know, life we expect us prolong because of the improvement of food, improvement of health. It's good, but what is happening in Japan? We suffer a lot. The population in rural areas. In Hiroshima, if you go to the mountain areas, I see many primary schools closed down. Thank you very much, primary schools age so and so. Why? Because we are, you know, small population. What does that mean, school, primary school closed down? Parents to them is no longer there. So many of the younger generation move to the family. How can we sustain our society? That is a serious problem which we encounter. And many of the country, especially Asian country, are going to face this problem. Maybe some of the African countries may not you know, have this one yet. But you have to think ahead. Uh, three messages which I have to convey, the continuation of land, uh, not to put emphasis on what you can see only. Because many of the students say, oh, we have got this problem, we have got this problem, we have problem may never disappear. Don't worry. We have also problem. Yeah? Don't think Japanese don't have a problem. No, we do have a lot of problem. So don't pay attention only what you can see, but think ahead. Because the problem may be absorbed in solving a longer span of the problem. Have you heard stay foolish? This is a very famous word. Steve Jobs. Yeah, Steve Jobs said that. So sounds a bit irony, but what I mean is you have to be flexible. You have to be ready to learn. Don't become adult-like attitude. Oh, I know that. I don't have to learn any longer. I, you know, I'm mature. I think it's very important for you to refresh yourself all the time so that you can accept new things. It's related to the first one, but the second one, long term thing. As I said, my case, you can pursue long term thing which you want to do. Of course, don't forget the short term as well. Yeah? Since you are here, you must have a, a master thesis or a doctor thesis, so you have to attain that. But at the same time, that is not the end of your life. You should continue uh, even after that. That is the meaning of a uh, long term. Especially nowadays, I see many things that like ethical fashion, ethical consumption, ethical food, many kind of things carry that. So our concern towards that is growing. Especially sustainability is important, but not only sustainable uh, development, but also how we can really concern other peoples or future generations. The last one is the interrelation between society and mathematics education. Uh, what can be expressed by, by mathematics. I think many of them can be expressed by mathematics, especially technology-related society. Today's society, many and many things can be developed utilizing technology. How you can describe that technology certainly requires mathematics. So I really believe in the power of mathematics. But unfortunate thing is, many people dislike mathematics and they drop out of that mathematics. We have to think of what kind of mathematics, what kind of mathematics education we should handle. Thank you very much. This is beautiful scenery. 
and uh, flow in the stream is continuous, but its water is never the same. It's flowing, flowing, flowing. It looks similar, but you know, it's never the same. This is a very famous expression uh, poem uh, from Japanese literature. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for your, uh, I say, very uh, inspiring uh, presentation. Thank you very much. So now, um, question, 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 and comments. Online participants, if there are any questions, you can write it down on the chat box, so uh, press the button and raise your hands. Or well, on the floor, ah, let us. Thank you for joining us for the program. My name is Shenan Chari, I'm from India. Uh, thank you for sharing your uh, work with you. Uh, going into your village uh, revenue, uh, I don't know just about the business project development. Uh, uh, in the recent study, we've been kind of a uh, Uh, thank you very much. I may not understand the you know, very detail, but um, uh, related to endogenous development of curriculum, especially related to that, and what is the prospect for next year? Uh, I'm usually training my students, don't ask me an answer. <laughs> because if you listen to my answer, you just memorize and you prepare for examination. Yeah? I'm not going to give an examination. <laughs> no, um, I hope uh, you will get some kind of idea, but uh, at the same time, uh, carrying that idea and think probably by yourself. Um, uh, when I started uh, ethnomathematics, there is certain criticism. Yeah? Are you going to keep our country lagging behind you? Yeah? Because ethnomathematics looking uh, very cultural based and old fashioned, which is not related to the uh, developing the technology. So there is a criticism that. To a certain extent, I agree with that uh, criticism. But uh, firstly, it's good for us to start off the familiar example, especially primary school students. So giving those kind of you know, uh, example to the primary so, uh, uh, students, so that to make uh, primary mathematics more friendly to the you know, local peoples. I'm not very sure about Nigerian case, but uh, if I talk about some other countries, say primary education, almost all proceed to primary education, but the secondary education, maybe around the half or even less than half. Partially education, maybe 10%. If I consider that situation, where are you looking at? That is an important question. Yeah? Certainly, we want to develop technology. So 10% is very important. Yes, I don't deny that. But firstly, 
we have to satisfy 100%. So try to make a good quality of primary education is the first priority for me at least. Yeah? Among them, uh, my thinking is we can make a good primary education, certainly quality of secondary education will improve because currently, in the case of Zambia, when I collected some of the data, uh, children are somehow imitating what the teacher is doing, not really thinking. So if teacher asks question, they change the answer because asking a question means you have got a different answer. So they are not thinking. But they are just you know, looking at the faces of the teachers. And oh, if the teacher says, this must be correct. But we have to make students to think. So even though that example is very simple, but what is more important is to make them think. And if we are able to attain at the primary level, I'm sure you can improve the quality of primary education and also, I think, uh, secondary education as well. Um, we have got to some kind of uh, materials for secondary education. Uh, certainly, we try to develop some of the material for STEM education related kind of things. But firstly, I think it's really important for us to pay attention primary and listen to the children's voices. What kind of research would you like to develop apart from what you have presented today? I'm very curious. Thank you very much for the presentation of Tanisa Um, probably uh, my interest is to us how we I can grow the next generation or networking the people. So I myself, uh, let me think. Um, certainly what I'm doing now is uh, that's what I'm interested in. But uh, after that, maybe how we can uh, Um, certainly, uh, this kind of work is really valuable. So uh, after this one, maybe we are piloting, so we want to spill over to other districts. So um, as I uh, work here, evidence-based and endogenous development. What is important is the evidence which we collect for. So after collecting this data, uh, we want to develop a teacher courage textbook. How we can uh, share these knowledge or data experiences with a future teacher. So hopefully um, around that area, how we can uh, substantiate this kind of work uh, towards a curriculum or classroom level. Thank you very much, Mr. Okay. One more question from the Okay. Good evening, Mr. Thank you for your I'm from Yara, I'm from I'm thinking about many of your experience in the presentation. Like I'm, I'm thinking now about the technomathematics and how technomathematics can be related to the individual uh, understanding of the mathematics terminology. Uh, you, you are thinking, you know, uh, the same topic related to the, some communities can understand something in a way and others in another way, but I think also individual persons can understand the 
things in different ways according to the partners. And is this related to level mathematics, the individual level? And the other question is, uh, did, did you make an analysis about how can we balance the things related to better mathematics and the globalization of mathematics uh, when we teach or when we devise curriculum? That's the question. Thank you. Ah, thank you very much. Um, certainly, uh, individual student differences itself is not to really ethnomathematics. Individual differences is even in local place or even in the black country, we can see that. Have you heard of constructivism? Yeah. Basically, constructivism paying attention, individual student try to make the you know, uh, meaning out of uh, uh, for themselves. So I think it's more related to that. Um, let me talk about the relation between ethnomathematics and some kind of global movement. Uh, in fact, uh, when register uh, for this course, there are some people who uh, gave me uh, questions. And not all of the questions I answer, but I categorize uh, four of them. And one of them may be related to what you said. Uh, the first one, usefulness and practicality of mathematics. How can we make mathematics learning more practical, more useful? That's a natural concern of yours. I do understand that. But at the same time, there is a danger. If it is useful going to supermarket and doing some shopping or making some things and useful mathematics, probably you are already using it. You don't really have to learn mathematics. In school. So studying in schools bringing another dimension. So that is very much related, short-term, long-term perspective. Don't just look at you know, the problem in front of you. So I think ironical expression, being practical in shorter term may not be practical in longer term. You may be able to solve in front of you, but that one is already finished. But if you think a little bit deeper, that solution may continue uh, being, uh, being effective. That is a part of uh, the um, first question. Next one, culture in mathematics and uh, mathematics education. Culture does not belong only to the past. When we are talking about culture, maybe you think about you know, for father, festival, some kind of tradition. But I don't think even in future, we must have a culture. Even younger generation creating some new culture. Yeah? My, my children likes dancing, so I don't know what kind of dance they have, but uh, that's a new culture, I suppose. So when we, we are talking about the culture, don't think too narrow-minded. We have to open up and try to you know, develop mathematics culture for future. And mathematics certainly important component of future society. Role of research or mathematics education research and future. I usually ask my students, yeah, just imagine. Have you ever seen a robot kind of dog, uh, which became very popular in the 1990s, I suppose. And it was very popular. Many people bought that, but they stopped buying. In future, if there is a robot teacher, are you going to buy? Robot teacher never go on to strike. Yeah? So suppose you are working in the ministry. You, however hard you are, they always complain, shut up. Don't you think so? 
if you are administrator, not the teacher, eh? if you are administrator. Robot teacher never complain, only you have to charge. And one robot is very expensive, certainly. But maybe robot teacher can teach you know, very accurately and very efficient. Maybe you can replace five teachers with robot teacher. No, why I'm asking this question to my student is, don't assume current situation continues forever. In near future, something may happen. In fact, the robot teacher is a certainly very, you know, uh, extreme examples, but some of the computer software behave like a teacher. They provide you some kind of uh, question. And if you answer correctly, and uh, several questions you answer, they will give the next two stage of problem. So you can, your, your study can continue. If, if many of the materials can be learned by that, then what is the role of teacher? Students can learn by themselves. Then what is the role of you? Are you able to provide something extra? No, no, I can make a mistake. Don't say that. I can crack a joke. Don't say that. So what is the purpose of meeting together, having a human-human interaction? Do you remember? 21st century skills. One of the skills which is important is communication. Yeah? Social-emotional skills how we can communicate each other, how we can feel the feeling of the other. Those are important points. So mathematics education, how we can utilize that. In fact, for that, I, um, I prepared one of the things. Socially open-ended program is a kind of work which I have been doing uh, since 2007. And we form a team of that. Uh, this is like a dance, yeah? But the dance is a sharp, you know, point. So this one is hard. Oh, okay. oh, oh. So this one, uh, like a dance. So uh, one ball is five point areas. Another point is three point areas. The last one is the border of one point and three point. Can you see? Three red ball, yeah? How much are you going to get? That is a question. This is open-ended problem. And also it says socially open-ended. Why? Because when we provide, some of the students say, three point, but the other one, one point, two point. And why? Because the person who throw is a first grader. We want to be kind to them. We want to please them so that they can come back again. And Five plus three plus three, or five plus three plus you know, three plus one, because it's touching both lines. Three plus five plus three plus three plus one plus one, giving a bonus, because it's quite rare to touching that. It's very interesting. And the below one is no, 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 no. Grade one, grade five, no, that doesn't matter. We have to be fair. Different kind of thinking are there, but based on different thinking, utilizing mathematics, we do communicate. And that is a knowledge or a skill, which we think is necessary for future. So anyway, those are some of the ideas. I hope you develop your part. Thank you. Thank you very much for the 
Thank you very much for your support and your practical support. And without your support, we are not, we are not able to make it. And uh, we did it. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, please uh, clap with them. And that's the great brand, great brand, name and the country only. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Oral Manoj Kumar. I'm from Nepal. Uh, August Kumar from the Pacific, Papua New Guinea. Please come from the Pacific. My name is Jacob Oliver. I'm from Japan. Thank you. Everyone, I'm Sina Sumini and I'm from Papua New Guinea. I am Mari Oloa from Papua New Guinea. I'm Sina Sumini 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 from Papua New Guinea. Namaste, I am Rasmus from Nepal. Yeah, this is Boko from the uh, Pacific area. Uh, okay, Mark, so. I am going to ask you to ask me. I am going to Some campaign of the pandemic on the Toyo Master of Education and giving us a very precious and inspiring lecture. And we have a Probably, we better get to this. Ah, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, and now closing remarks, Dr. Thank you very much uh, for your very inspiring presentation and work based on your career development. And uh, I uh, really interested in Maria's uh, uh, topic. And uh, 
especially uh, the, uh, you always think about the student uh, development of the mathematics and the extra mathematics or evidence based assessment always think about the student. And uh, consider this, then you uh, think about the uh, uh, intended criterion, intended criterion, or problem. So, so uh, you are very busy, but uh, uh, Nato City and Tokushima Prefecture have the many traditional and local places. Mentioned in the presentation. And Dr. Sensei, please enjoy our place before going back to Hiroshima. <laughs> and thank you very much again for coming to our university and giving very valuable uh, lecture for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so now it's the end of the uh, and Thank you very much for joining in person. Thank you very much for joining in online. Thank you very much. And, uh, okay, so that's for the Okay, and uh, there are many questions here. So, Okay, so uh, 15 minutes more. So if you uh, don't have to stay, please stay. Uh, well, this is uh, 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 based on the very fast revolution of technology, what is your perspective on your future mathematics type one? Based on the very, very fast revolution technology, what is your perspective on the future mathematics? Uh, thank you, very, thank you very much. I, I, I think uh, basically mathematics don't change so fast. Uh, although some of the topic also emerges, but uh, some of the basic mathematics which we are using, most of them, uh, I think 18, 19th uh, mathematics. So in that sense, even though some kind of you know, new development of technology is coming, but certainly mathematics as a basic technology uh, can still apply to many of the ideas. But probably, uh, one important uh, change which we have to uh, consider is uh, data science or statistics, how children can utilize those knowledge or information, and that's probably important. Thank you very much. Another question is, what are some, what are some of the right circumstances? What are some of the critical areas of focus when considering the integration of global and local issues in education from your experience? Um, uh, probably I have already mentioned, but um, what is it? Um, have you, uh, I, uh, I suppose you are aware that the uh, PPDAC. PPDAC is a statistics uh, cycle, yeah? uh, starting from problems. So I, I think uh, what is important is uh, uh, you can start from the existing some of the problem and try to uh, theorize it and solve it and uh, giving the feedback to the next two generation or next two uh, cycles of the problem. So through that, you can uh, gain some kind of problem solving skills. Uh, thank you very much. And from the floor, any questions? Anybody please? Oh, no. oh. 
Or could the Greek remedies not have been a proper solution? So, my question is not directly about the practice, but about the experience that you showed. So, now I think that in 40 years ago, it's easy for you to marry your achievements. If you look at this, are you thinking that you would achieve all of these things? So, if I was in mindset, would you believe when my life is done, you will make all of this progress, all of these achievements? Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, for that purpose, I think uh, Dr. Kusaka said, I said, you are stupid in a good sense. Yeah? Because some of the even younger people are a little bit too clever. And they know if I take this, I have to have uh, you know, problems. But many things, this, this is from, you know, my conviction, from my experience, many things, unless you reach there, you cannot know what will happen in future. So some of the wise person who are seeing, well, there is a lot of you know, uh, difficulties. I don't want to do that. So let me take an easy one or more uh, economically uh, you know, uh, beneficial. Uh, uh. So that kind of thing is uh, very important. That we, like this, just like, like this year, we don't know what will happen. We can see past. But future, we don't know. Um, even myself, I have never thought I would become a professor. When I am entering into university, I have never thought of becoming a, a dean. So I don't know what will happen in the future. But uh, one thing which I wanted to pursue is the kind of things which I felt in my 20s. Let me try to answer that. That is a passion. So for human being, I think you should carry some kind of things which you want to attain. Certainly, we cannot live only ideal. We have to be sometimes realistic. We have to make money to support my family. We have to do some of the work which we don't want to because my boss is saying. So there is a certain kind of reality. But still, there is a room for you to decide. If you can decide, it's up to you now. You may say, oh, no, today I'm very tired, so let me sleep. Before I'm going to sleep, let me read one paper, one page. Because one page doesn't make a big difference a day. But if you accumulate 365 days, that quite good. Uh, in Japan, we have a famous proverb that's accumulate, accumulate to mountain. The small, small part can accumulate big uh, kind of achievement. That's what I mean. Anyway. Currently, we are in the post truth era. And how do we distinguish and verify if data we come across is really cultured or not? Uh, unfortunately, I don't really think to distinguish truth and not truth is easy. So uh, what is probably important is bring those truths or uh, evidence and discuss. Because some of the evidence are distorted, sometimes intentionally gain some of the evidence and drop some other evidence. And evidence itself may not uh, distort it, but 
intentionally choose some of the preferable data, already you are distorting the information. So I, I think with evidence, we have to continue discussing. And from that, uh, I think we learn how to discuss. But to reach the you know, final goal is not easy things. I'm sure from now on, we become, we face a very difficult situation. Like uh, we are, you know, there is a mixed reality, virtual reality and reality is being mixed and it's very difficult. But at the same time, that is a negative sign. But let us paint also half bright future. We may be able to create something new. We may be able to some, you know, new possibility. Thank you very much. Uh, from the Can you make it a bit shorter, but simple? Um, I think there is a lot of mathematics story or mathematics text. Uh, although I may sound a little bit different from what I said, but if you have really uh, interest, I would recommend to read some of the you know, mathematics textbooks because uh, because um, uh, storybooks tell us a uh, very interesting case, but. Uh, certainly, in order to interpret some of the instances using mathematics, we need good knowledge of mathematics. But many of the classrooms, they teach mathematics first before the interest. So they are um, demotivated and they drop off. So I, I think firstly, you can read some of the enjoyable mathematical story and see if, oh, this is interesting or this kind of things I want to solve. Uh, so try to raise some kind of motivation first. Then read some of the good text. Thank you very much. Uh, one more question from the Ah, uh, yes, right. So, really, you don't have to let me try. Thank you very much, Robert Sensory and Sensory Sensory also. Oh, also, us we are teachers. We are simple teachers. Um, we cannot have what we do have. As the power to influence uh, governments, Ministry of Education, in order to make important changes in our countries. 
Uh, I would like to get from Papa Sente, uh, maybe an advice, maybe. But did you suggest that you know, as teachers, after we return to our campus, how can we help children, primary education, and uh, our population in developing not only mathematics, but the basic knowledge? The primary education yes, professor. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry. Um, I do think I was somebody. I was senior high school teacher. Maybe 10,000, 100,000. Uh, more than that, one of them. So uh, I have never thought I become a professor, as I said. So only my thinking is I want to solve the problem which I have. So we need passion and continued effort. At the same time, what one person can do is limited. Former team, like-minded kind of person, maybe you can organize some kind of uh, meeting for professional organization or something. If there is some organization already in your country, you can join and you can work very hard so that you can be uh, one of the important leaders there. Then you can increase your you know, opportunity to talk to them. Through that, if what you are saying is good, there may be somebody who can listen to you. Anyway, the government also have to do something. And uh, when I have a training, sometimes I talk to the government people. I think government also should come down to schools and try to talk to the teachers and also to the university professors. I uh, tell them usually that don't sit in the office, go to schools and see what is the reality. So uh, what you can do is, I think you can do those kind of things, but at the same time, we have to influence those people. Yeah, so through JICA or through uh, the University of Education, Ozaro Sensei, uh, maybe we can influence uh, the university professors. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is a very final question. And, uh, in what concrete ways can we integrate the values in the teaching and learning of mathematics? I think uh, that sounds a little bit problematic uh, because you think value is static. There is a value, and how can we integrate in teaching? But I think value is also dynamic. While we are trying to integrate, the value may change and the future value may appear. So I feel the question uh, taking a value as a static. So I, I think that is not really healthy. So uh, especially the kind of new movement which we are talking about is uh, ethic. Uh, those kind of ethical kind of values I think we should really inculcate, grow the kind of value among the you know, uh, peoples. So in that sense, I think we should take a little bit more dynamic, dynamic way. Yeah. Like uh, stay foolish, same as that. If we think uh, like a complete way, the moment we say, oh, we completed, you know, included value. That is, the, that is the end of the law, I think. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, uh, that's all for today's uh, program. Uh, please uh, give it up to me again.